Welcome to volume five. Uh, and we have got some absolutely huge news to talk about, Amar. Um, after we finished recording the last one, this uh, this bombshell broke. Uh, Lewis Hamilton to Ferrari in 2025. Uh, and Amar, I can think of two, no, no two podcasters better place to talk about this. A Ferrari fan and a Lewis Hamilton fan. I think there's a lot to get into. Um, let's get into it. Um, I, want, I, I, want to, I want to start with you, man. There's a as a as a Ferrari fan, as a Ferrari aficionado, uh, a man who who bleeds red. Wait a second, everyone bleeds red, but you especially. What are your thoughts? What was your gut reaction to this? I mean, this this uh, well, 2024 couldn't have been more amazing, right? So I want to kick things off by saying thank you, Lewis Hamilton. Thank you, Ferrari. Thank you, Formula One, right? Uh, but this is one of those moments where it's like, where were you when you heard this news? And I was <laughs> in the dentist's office when I heard this news. So can you imagine the mix of emotions I went through as as I was as hearing like messages come through and beep, beep, beep. Man, I've even heard from people who I haven't heard from in years just say, hey, Lewis Hamilton to Ferrari. What do you think, man? Like, uh, it it has just been amazing. So I hope uh, the folks that have been reaching out to me will will actually catch us on this pod. I will be sure to let you know when this goes up. Uh, but good God, I have I have a mix of emotions, man. In my in my head, I I you know I was going to different places. Like, how do I react? What does this mean? How the hell did it happen? Like this this just seems crazy a moment ago, right? And then and here we are. Uh, so yeah, that was my first emotion. How about you? Where were you when you heard this? Uh, well, this had been going on all day uh, because the, the the original news story for for, for the last twenty four hours was uh, Andretti being rejected by F one, and I thought, great, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to finally talk about this. Um, but that seems to have been pushed off for another news day. Poor old Andretti, um, in a classic in a classic bait and switch, we 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 got the first little little rumors starting at the beginning of the day but from reputable sources in Italy. Um, and subsequently, you know, it got confirmed. The first, the first proper confirmation I saw was on Autosport um, with, their, with a more to follow style article. And I thought, wait a second, this is actually, actually real. It's actually gonna happen. Um, and then it did. Um, and I have to say, look, as, as, as a Lewis fan, um, I, I had severe anxiety. I still have it now. I don't think I've completely cleared it. Uh, but the but the more I picture it, the more I think about it, um, and the more the argument for moving to Ferrari um, crystallizes, um, the more confident I am, the more happy I am. Um, but I don't I don't think it's a completely risk free um, move. And I think there's uh, there's some stuff to talk about. But at the moment, super happy um, and really, really excited for that for that driver lineup. I think uh, Charles and Lewis at Ferrari, my um, my favorite driver on the grid at the moment, and the fastest driver on the grid at the moment uh, in the same uh, in the same team, gunning for a world championship. Oof, fireworks. You know, it it it's funny. We were uh, we in, in the last time we we were talking, we were catching up on contracts from last week, right? So so forget the Andretti news. The Lando Norris story feels like it happened eons ago. Oh, what and, the hell was that? And, yeah, <laughs> but it, yeah. it also also pours <laughs> it pours cold water on everything I said, doesn't it? Um, yeah, you know, here I am talking about um, drivers building up franchises and you know being part of a you know being the talisman of a team, uh, and and Lewis just just who pooed all of that and just said, nah, this is about me doing what I need to do to get where I need to get to. And um, so, even if even if Charles Leclerc is in that car, I don't care. That's, I'll take it. The beauty of Formula One is that we know nothing and anything is possible, right? Contracts don't mean a thing. I have many questions, <laughs> but but just staying on the Lando Norris, Charles Leclerc extensions, I'm wondering when their opt-outs are. Could it be by the end of next year, right? Uh, or the year after, rather, the, when the you know when the new contract kicks in? Is there an early out where the contract could just be negated? Like, 
did Lando know about this, right? Like may, Charles did. It sounds like he knew about it, um, yeah. you know, but it, I, I don't know. Did Lando know about it? Like, and so this is the beauty of this. And this is such a massive gift for Formula One. A couple of weeks ago, we were talking about, you know, what F1 needs going into the 2024 season. It's already given us that. I mean, the, the, the reality of this is uh, that it doesn't even matter what happens on track because the whole 24 race calendar will go on speculating what's happening, you know, in the garages, in the press conferences, interactions uh, between team principals uh, and leaving drivers. How, do, how does the, exactly, how, how does the, how does the on track action sort of, how do the decisions on the pit wall reflect what's going on on, going on in the background you know it's going to be you know is, is that is the george versus uh lewis dynamic going to change at mclaren at, at mercedes and similarly is carlos just not going to care if there's a team order is he just going to turn around and say see you later if there's a championship suddenly on the line for either of those drivers things have suddenly become a little bit more hot under the collar at home uh i think it's going to be yeah it's going to be fascinating you know, I want to get into winners and losers here in a little bit, but I think the uh, the the person that is both a winner and loser in this is probably Max Verstappen, right? All of this is sort of an indicator of where 2024 is going, which is a dominant Red Bull season, or I should say a dominant Max season, maybe not a dominant Red Bull season. But I think if, you know, and I'm not a betting guy, but if I were to bet money, I think it's 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 probably the safest bet out there. He will also be the loser at the same time because no one will care about him. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, towards the end of last year too, right? There would be races where we wouldn't see Max for like 20, 30 laps. It's like, oh yeah, here's the final lap and Max is the winner. And, and now this year again, all the cameras, all the action, all the juicy stuff will, will be focused on everyone but Max. Like he's just going to be sitting out there winning races, winning qualifying sessions, winning everything. Well, he's just going to be a bored guy, man. Max has oh, got to yeah. be the biggest loser. Right? <laughs> but I feel like the biggest loser. I feel, I feel like if there's one driver on the grid who doesn't care, it's going to be Max Verstappen. Like, he, he, I don't think he cares at all whether he's on the on the screen or not. If if he if it means that the the interviews are directed at somebody else. I think he'll be very. Oh happy no! With I, that. I I think I think if I if I were a journalist, right, my first question to Max would be nothing about his race, <laughs> right? You know, how do you, how do you think this went? What did you make of like? That's all I would do. Believe me, he would be more interested in that, right? Like in, yeah, in some yeah, ways, yeah, it yeah. would it would be more captivating. But it is. But this has been. Oh my God! This is this is a massive move, right? Uh, because it. I mean, we can play the 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 sort of the driver carousel now, right? Because anything is possible now. Anything and everything is possible. I mean, looking at all the open seats, right? Mercedes. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about Williams too at some point, right? We're gonna have implications down the line. Does Aston Martin now have an opening by by virtue of Alonso's potential move? Who knows? And this is amazing. This, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 there's normally one move that 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 catalyzes the entire market, doesn't it? And it looks like this is the one. But it's, I have to say, it's not it's not the one I expected. We've just talked about it for so many seasons now um, mm. that I just thought, you know, it's, I it's think not it... really going to happen. But but there's clearly been a confluence of factors, a push from uh, a push from Mercedes, be that um, performance or or more subtle, uh, and a pull from Ferrari, um, and it's and it's and it's happened. It's got it. They've they've got it over the line. Um, I want to come back to you again, though. For, as a Ferrari fan, is a Ferrari winners or losers out of this? So um, I, I think the last time we were talking, I told you that nobody wins transaction days like Ferrari does, right? And, <laughs> and yes, yeah, so all 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 the news about you know uh, you know all the talent leaving on the technical side, everywhere else, and yeah, doesn't matter. We got the goat, man. It, that's all. That's all that matters. Um, you know, I. I I think it'll be interesting, right? I mean, I think everyone's saying all the right things right now, uh, but in giving Charles the multi-year extension and all the um, the the verbiage and the story that came around that, it it seemed like uh, they were putting all their eggs in that proverbial basket, right? And Charles's basket to say, okay, you're our guy. This is the sort of the complete opposite of it, and 
although we've been told that Charles was aware of it, it's one thing to be aware of it. It's another thing to be happy about it. So I would still be curious about what his opt-out clauses look like and what does all that mean in a couple of years? But that's to be for later. I think this is a massive win for Ferrari in the sense that they're going to bring in someone that has done it as such a high. I mean, we can, there's no need to waste time talking about Lewis's greatness, right? It, it's, it sort of speaks for itself. But I think Ferrari really needed it where, where, where they were at right now. I, as much as I love signs and, and I hate to see what's happening with him right now, um, sort of being left out despite wanting to continue. I think bringing Lewis in, I mean, I think on some level, even if you're a Carlos Sainz, you, you really just sort of have to accept that as a reality. I think Lewis brings in a little bit of what the 21st century represents in terms of team culture, uh, being able to impact different parts of the organization. Um, and in many ways, it's a clash of cultures, right? Lewis has previously spoken about Ferrari not being sort of aligned with all his initiatives, all his off-track initiatives, Um I think that'd be interesting to see how that works. But I think from a racing standpoint, from an on-track standpoint, I think this really gives Ferrari that that shot in the arm to say, okay, we need, we can, we can rally behind him. This is a guy that has won, you know, many, many titles uh, with two different teams already. So um, I think it's a big win. It's also a big win because and for having Fred Vasseur in there. This move would not happen had your good old pal Mattia Benato be, been there. I can guarantee you that. This is a okay. big win for Freddie Vasseur. And any, if anything, it'll hopefully bring him a little bit of separation from all the madness that goes up, you know, at, at Ferrari. Um, and so I think it's that. My final thought is this. Hmm. We'll talk more about the idea of driving for Ferrari. But as Sebastian Vettel has said, whether you say it or not, Everyone is a Ferrari fan. Driving for Ferrari is the equivalent of wearing purple and gold for the Los Angeles Lakers. Every basketball player imagines wanting to do that, right? For different reasons. It's the same thing with Ferrari. You, you absolutely want there to be that. And so that's the element that, that sort of proves itself over and over again. So I'll close by saying this. Despite our, ourselves, we can score a world champion to come and drive for us like that this has got to be the most amazing news that has been there in, in 2024 and the season hasn't even started yet yeah uh okay i, I want to try and bring a sort of how i feel about it from a lewis hamilton point of view like wh where where i think the advantage and advantages and disadvantages of it are right i think i think uh, i think there's a there's a performance oriented reason for this move right but there's also the the lewis as a romantic kind of move um as a romantic racing driver aspect to this too you know this is the team that um senna would have wanted to finish his career off at if he if he'd been able to mm -hmm. um and it certainly feels to me uh, listening to to how lewis has spoken in the past that this is what this is a move that he wanted to make but it's always i've always felt like it like he wanted it wanted to make it if it if there was a performance aspect to it as well like he wanted to be able to win races and championships with Ferrari not just go there to tick a box um, and 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 this could could potentially do both those things right the fact that to to the to the big upside to this for me from a from a storyline point of view right is you know, Lewis is on seven titles at the moment. He wants to win an eighth title. Who would he be taking that title from? Michael Schumacher. Where did Michael Schumacher... Who is he synonymous with? He's right. synonymous with Ferrari, right? So, so to win an eighth title in a Ferrari, to take, the, to take the, the individual championship record away from Michael Schumacher... Or to surpass him, it's not really taking it away, is it? It's, it's just it's just taking the next step. It would be poetic, I think, for that to be done by a driver who's driving at Ferrari. Um, and and, and th there's a certain cinematic quality to that. I think it's it's just it's just really it's just really lovely. And and to and to come from two or three seasons where it's been hard hard work to come to an organisation with all of the history and all of the passion and 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 everything that's wrapped up in Ferrari to do it there, there is something special about that. There is, you know, you, you can't you can't deny it. 
but on the other on the other hand there are some there are some there are some aspects of this that are, that are worrying they, they still worry me i i don't think this was a fred for sort of move I, I i think this has come from higher up than that john elkin um, I, I think john elkin's been been talking to lewis um and th that that's the level at which this conversation has been happening um it's the the, the reports of, of this happening where with john elkin has, has has been trying to convince lewis that this is the organization that he wants to come and drive for so from a from a separation of management and you know upper management and team management i still think there's a bit of interference going on there and that that worries me slightly because ferrari has still got charles leclerc there right charles not a pushover and charles not a slow driver arguably he's the quickest driver on the grid over one lap and when he has a car to his liking like he did from japan onwards last last season he can be devastating in races like there are races in in 2022 even where you know he, he even towards the back end of the season in a car that had clearly dropped off he was he was anonymously even bringing the car home in fairly unbelievable positions mm -hmm. um kota is, is one place that, that mm -hmm. springs to mind that was a fun race for us to watch mm -hmm. uh, and you know shah was a key player within it so having that there and and all of the rhetoric that we talked about last week that shah you know feels that loyalty to ferrari that he's grown up with them that they have shown him faith that they have altered their their car a little bit at least to to favor what he wants uh, that he's got the multi-year deal um that all worries me a little bit right it's one thing having a highly rated teammate come into the team that you're already in at, which is what lewis had in 2022 it's another thing going into somebody else's team and having the same effect now if someone's going to do it lewis hamilton's going to do it and and one thing that I find similar about those two drivers is that they don't really care who's in the other car. They don't care, right? They have, both of them have so much inner belief in their own ability that they're not looking over their shoulder at what's happening. Lewis certainly since 20, 2016 has been like that. You know, it, it's, you know, he, he had his time having to worry about what Rosberg was doing in the other garage. But even then it was, he's, he's an annoyance. He's doing all this stuff to get under my skin because I'm better than him. He knew that. Um, and that's that's continued. And Charles, similarly, you know, he puts it on the line every single week, week in, week out. And sometimes he has accidents, but those accidents aren't happening because he's worried about what Carlos Sainz is doing. They're happening because he wants, he's worried about what Max Verstappen's doing. He's like, why am I not able to, 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 to perform? Why is my car not able to perform at a level that allows me to beat max verstappen not the guy in the in the garage opposite me so from that point of view i don't think either of them will will, will worry about who's who's in the garage opposite who will come out of that i think is a different is a different question um i have i have to say i think i think charles leclerc is a more difficult proposition to to George Russell in terms of outright ability. And I think, but I think the, 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 the ability gap is narrow enough, right? The, 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 the pure pace ability is narrow enough between Lewis and, and Charles that you'd expect that with his greater experience of having gone through championships and, and, and been in organizations, you'd, my money would probably be still on him coming out on top. Whether that's enough with both of them in the same team taking points off each other here and there against a dominant Max Verstappen in a in a essentially a single team, a single driver Red Bull team. I don't know. Is that enough for them to win a championship? I don't know. Well, I, I mean, I I see that, but we're also making an assumption of what Red Bull will do, right? I mean, I 
having seen this move, uh, I imagine that they're going to want to find uh, a stronger pairing than what they believe they have at this moment. Mm. So uh, that is a, a sort of a TBD for the moment, right? Like, and, and this is the beauty of it. Anything we say right now can change in the next 12 hours, right? Something that might happen. <laughs> so I do agree with you. I think that uh, look, um, there is going to be a lot to be sorted out, right? Like there is, how do you handle, you know, two drivers within your team going at it? That, that would be an interesting proposition. Um, I also think that would be a welcome proposition for us, Ferrari fans, because we haven't quite been able to have anything close to that. I don't know, since the time that Leclerc got into Ferrari and there were a couple of races in 2019 where it, it kind of felt like they might be, but even then it they were clear second, right, in, in many ways, right? Uh, they were not really in the mix for, for many of the races. So I think for a change, it would be nice to worry about team orders for for crying out loud. Like that's not happened since, well, <laughs> this guy won, right? Um, so um, really, I, I, I yeah, um, I mean, a lot to be seen. I, I think this is a massive risk for Lewis too, right? In many ways, I mean, we've talked about leaving everything that you've built at Mercedes and, and wanting to transition into a new place even if you're a seven-time champion, you're coming over from a team where you've been there for what more than a decade, right? Um, that that that's not going to be easy. It's not easy settling into Ferrari compared to any other teams because you know you have to sort of learn Italian or at least try your best to do that, right? Those are not the kinds of things that comes with you know being a driver almost anywhere else, right? So mm -hmm. I I think that's there, but on some level, it also feels like. For someone of Lewis Hamilton's stature, who's accomplished so much, he is, you know, arguably the 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 best ever, right? Um, at least when you just look at the numbers, right? That's probably not debatable in that regard. But I, I kind of wonder if he was looking for, you know, a burst of sort of motivation, right? You, we live in a time and age where, you know, people are more mobile than ever before. You rarely work at your same job for you for you know for all your life. We all change teams, we all change companies or careers. And I think in some ways, it feels like he wanted to sort of be in a new environment, right? And be maybe kind of give himself a little bit of a jolt of motivation, if you will. And I think that's that's an interesting thing too, right? Because he, of course, the the romanticism of, of being at Ferrari is in its place that, but I also think that being in one organization for as long as you have been and been through so many highs and and some big, big, massive lows, right? Um, that that also kind of weighs on you emotionally and and maybe a change of scenery in some ways gets you reinvigorated. It's almost like kind of taking like a sabbatical, right? In some ways, right? I mean, that's what, what you see in a, a rejuvenated Fernando Alonso when he came back. You saw Kimi rejuvenated when he came back in, what is it, uh, 2012, right? I mean, that those were those were massive years too, right? So I think in some ways there's that. I do want to pivot, though, and I know, I don't know if you have a thought, but I do want to pivot to Mercedes as well. Um, because... Yeah, yeah. I mean, just 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 on that, I never really had an issue with Lewis's motivation. Only in the last three races of last season, I thought like his head dropped and he just didn't care. And I think, and I think that the like the greatest motivation would be that Mercedes come out with a car that is competitive. You know that. Um, is consistently allowing him to access his best traits. That for him is all the motivation he needs. He just needs that. My, I think that the, the the difference here, the, the change that's happened, is that his, the, the confidence that he has that his team will allow him to do that is yeah. on the wane. That that's what's changed, right? Because yeah. he he's been rock solid up until now. That I I trust my team. We're a family. They're working really hard. To they didn't listen to me. I told them that this is what they needed to do. And well, here we are. And clearly having James Allison come back into the team and, and, and sort of change the concept of the car and change things around so they fit better for what Lewis wants wasn't enough. Um, and and part of that is going to be because, you know, it's. I think it's interesting that what I said about Fred Bissett last last week was... Uh, it, it, it's going to be quite prescient now. We're going to talk about Mercedes in a second, but I just, just th this is this is the key point for me. This is this is why I think I'm I'm generally okay with with what Lewis is doing now is because part members of the team at Mercedes that were not happy with the with the Mike Elliott regime that that had pushed to you to develop the thirteen and then the fourteen 
are not there anymore. Loic Serra is the main is the main person that is now at Ferrari's gardening league will finish to start in 2025, just at the point that Lewis is now going to start as well. So there are he, he's not thinking about this in terms of I'm going there just as a romantic finish off my career kind of thing. He's going there thinking Mercedes have been listening to me for so many years. The, the, the one time they didn't listen to me, look what happened. And now they can, and they continue to, to compound that. But the, but the team members that were behind me have actually gone to Ferrari. What better place to go, to go to Ferrari with, where the technical team have got my back. And despite the fact that the team, that the, the, ostensibly the team there is built around what Shah wants, actually my team are there, right? I can build something. And that I think is powerful, right? Like having, it's like, it's it, it's often what the MotoGP riders want, right? They're, when when, when they move to another team, um, you know, Rossi did it when he moved from Honda to Yamaha all those years ago. He took his entire engineering crew with him uh, and and it, and it means that you know your little self-contained unit is still there and gives you the best chance of success. And that that I think is at least part of the reason why why Lewis is comfortable to do this now, and it gives me some confidence that that actually it's it's a it's a smart it's a smart move, and it's and it's um and it may well pay off. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think that any any decision like this is made um, in a very sort of simple way, right? This mm. Lewis is a uh, above being uh, a world class champion is a, is an excellent uh, you know processor of Formula One, right? He's he's a Formula One savant in many ways, right? He knows uh, things that we don't know about, things that don't get talked about much much better than we do behind the scenes. So. I think anyone that just says, "Oh, this was a, a sort of a romantic move to write, yeah, don, don a red race suit," is 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 very is sort of a gross oversimplification of this, right? So, I absolutely think, and I, I don't I don't question his motivation so much. I think it's just kind of what you said, right? It's being in a new environment, new atmosphere with folks that look. If there there is something to be said about bringing a championship to a team that has been starving for a decade and a half, right? That is not the case. What happens when 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 winning happens is it, it's very difficult to maintain. It's very difficult for everyone to be on the same page year in and out. So as you can see, uh, Mercedes went a different way. I'm sure that in a couple of years, Red Bull will be dealing with some of the same. I don't want to call it complacency because you're it that that implies that you know you're not giving it your best. But I do think that winning brings an element of challenge that's different than sort of getting to the mountaintop the first time. And for, you know, most Ferrari fans, I mean, most <laughs> most new Ferrari fans are, and really for the team in general, right? I mean, 2015, 20, uh, sorry, two, 2007, 2008 was the last time we could really have anything to celebrate about. And that's really not been there. So I think in that regard, I, there, there's an element of that. And I'm sure a champion as Lewis would feel, wow, I can actually bring something to the table in addition to you know, sort of aligning myself with folks that that really want to want to win, and we do want to win, and we will win. It's gonna happen. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I think so. Let, let's let's sort of turn the tables a little bit, right? And I, I do want to know from you because you're not only are you are you, are you a Lewis Hamilton fan, but you've been an ardent supporter of Mercedes uh, at least the last few years. I, what does this move say about them? I mean, this feels like a bit of an indictment on on where they're at, right? It's a massive indictment, isn't it? And it tells you one thing, right? Um, that the 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 Lewis may enjoy having a team around him, and he may enjoy having um, good relationships with his with his coworkers. But ultimately, if he thinks that they're not going to get him a championship, he's not going to stay. And it, and they've made the overtures, right? Um, I talked about it in in my mate Cameron's um, pod as well. You know, we, we all talked about it that that Toto was making all these um, comments that he's um, he's ready to 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 win a a world championship with with Lewis Hamilton to bring home the eighth. Um, and clearly now that was a that was a public statement to Lewis to say we want to do this for you and stay. And it wasn't enough. Um, and it, and it, it, 
it presumably speaks to the fact that there's been enough damage done from all of the engineering and the and the car philosophy and the backbreaking porpoising that's happened over the, lo- the last two seasons where he's felt like I'm I'm putting everything into this every single race but number one you're you're giving you know you're you're, you're giving uh, big props to my younger teammate over there um and on top of that you're not following the direction that I think we should be going in, even though I'm telling you that we should. Um, I thought that having somebody like James Allison back in the fold again was was going to swing that balance. And I'm sure that that's part of the reason why Toto brought him back uh, or, you know, enticed him back. But um, that in and of itself clearly wasn't enough, especially given the fact that other members of the team that did support Lewis have, have left. So it would just be James Allison. Um, perhaps not just James Allison, but... Uh, but but it, but it feels like there's been some faith that that's been lost there. Um, if we're talking about winners and losers, though, I, I have to say one of the biggest winners out of this is going to be George Russell, right? Surely. No, I mean G- George, George becomes the clear focus within that team. Does he though? I I don't know. It, it, this is so hard to say, right? Because it it really depends on who they fill into that second seat. But I do I do want to piggyback off of your point, right? I think this the fact that this is happening is one thing, right? But the mm. fact that it's happening now, or maybe this was in the works. I mean, it was the end of August when they announced an extension. Lewis and Mercedes did. Uh, what what has really changed? And I get it. We only heard about it today because there were rumors. Maybe it was time to be a little bit later. But clearly, there was an extension signed. And yet, you know, there was a, hey, I might be moving away from you guys type of thing, right? I mean, what 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 happened there? What the, the timing of it is just amazing to me. Like, did Lewis see the concept of this year's car and be like, all right, this is this is probably it. This is it's it's not going to be anywhere close to where I'm at, right? Um, or is it just sort of you know again a general uh, you know like fatigue with with the team and having gone through what they've gone through the last couple of years? I mean, this is not in some ways unlike you know what uh, what's happened in the past too, right? This is not. I mean, Nigel Mansell comes to mind in some way. Sebastian Vettel did that. Alonso did that sort of, right? Like winning championships and moving teams. But you have a couple of years that that look a little difficult and then a decision like this happens. But why sign an extension and then two years later, up to two years later, a couple of months later, just sort of, you know, pivot from it? It's it's amazing. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is an old school move, right? Um, Ron Dennis always used to like to have uh, his driver line up two years in advance, advance. Sort of set, right? Uh, this is how Fernando ended up in the car in 2007, despite knowing that he was still driving for for Renault in 2006. Right. So this is this is this is coming from the old school. Um, And I think, you know, this hasn't happened in the last 24 hours. This has been this has been coming for for months, I would have thought. And it it probably just needed some little thing from uh, some little pull from John Elkan and some little further loss of faith on the Mercedes end to make it, you know, to, to get it over the line. Um, and clearly that that threshold has been has been met and and Lewis is now at Ferrari. But it, but you're right, it does it does have um uh it, it does have some some implications for the season upcoming, which um I, I'd like to talk about actually, because I think I think it makes this season very, very, very interesting potentially. But the scenario, well, well, the scenario only works if by some miracle, Mercedes and Ferrari or Mercedes or Ferrari have built a car that can potentially go up against Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. Because then you've got an incumbent and an outgoing driver. Certainly in the case of uh, Mercedes um, who have equal opportunity. Amar, what happens? What happens? I, I if, think. Uh, well, well, listen. I, I don't. I don't think that's that's too hard to think of, right? If if they are so fortunate as to as to be in the position to, I mean, for Ferrari, it, it's straight up that they they would want Leclerc to win because obviously, get one in right now before Lewis gets there, 
and then you you kind of see how that goes and and we're not just talking about 24 right if they're competitive in 24 then they're theoretically just as competitive if not more competitive in 25 after which those regulations will kick in right for 26 but all right we, we could we could talk about okay, that because 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 the timing of the, the regulation change is an interesting one too but but, but this, this for me i especially if it's mercedes I don't know how that works. No, it's that. a no-brainer. You still back Lewis. You you win the, you win the eighth title with him because there is nothing to lose. What did they have to gain out of giving George uh, or put you know getting not giving George Russell a title, but you know giving him the best shot at it? Why wouldn't you give it to the seven-time champion to win the eighth when they clearly believe they were outdone by Abu Dhabi twenty twenty-one? Right? Why not just go ahead and win it, say goodbye, and you know what? It's you know, honestly, I don't think Mercedes can be upset with Lewis in any way. Like, this should be nothing but a thank you tour. Uh, you know, many great players that have retired, you know, Kobe Bryant did the, the whole, you know, sort of retirement tour. This has to be just that for Lewis. They, Lewis and Mercedes have nothing, should have nothing bad in between them. This is not a, a marriage that's sort of ending out of, you know, on, on you know, yeah, the last couple of years have been bad. But, I mean, this, they've been massive to the sport. Um, and, you know. on, but this isn't about this isn't about the relationship between Lewis and Mercedes. This is the relationship relationship between George, Lewis, and Mercedes. I mean, George... George is going to listen. George is going to sit there and go, look. Last season, I outqualified him, right? And the head to head, I outqualified him. Why should I not get the shot? Especially now he's leaving. Why? Why are you giving him priority? And he, they won't. You know, they'll give it to the guy who's fastest. That's that's always been Mercedes's play, but the but the 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 balance right. shifts a little bit. There's a but subtle. If you can't say they are going. They're going to give it to the guy who's the fastest. And if Lewis does end up being the fastest, and he not get it, that that just sounds. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm not. No, no, I'm not saying that they wouldn't do that. I'm I'm, I'm not saying that if, if Lewis the is best the fastest. Yeah. yeah, if the if Lewis is the fastest guy, then yeah, that's it. It's it's his title to lose ultimately, right? I mean, and also, but, what but, do you think but, that? But the, if, I mean, sorry, but I've heard a lot about like, well, they might start, they might not, you know, let him know about everything moving forward. But for a guy that's been with the team for more than a decade, I cannot imagine very many things. And again, it's not like there's a massive shift in regulation coming up for 25, right? So it's not like you are conceptually going to let him in on anything. Yeah, he may not be part of the plans moving forward, but as far as this year goes, you need him. You need him to develop the car. Even if, and by all stretch of the imagination, it looks like they're going to come up with a relatively new concept. You need Lewis Hamilton to help you bring it to wherever it can be. Like that, you can't expect George Russell to do all of that. That's that's a that's a frightening indictment of George Russell, um, and that that speaks more to to George's ability, which I, I think is better than what you're what you're describing. You know, third season in the team. I don't think he's he's a pushover. And I think didn't say that. He, yeah, but 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 this isn't about Mercedes putting everything behind Lewis. That's not what I'm saying, right? This is them treating both both drivers equally. But in the push, in the in the when when push comes to shove, in those give and take moments, George is not going to give. Like he isn't giving oh, even now. Yeah, but they and, weren't. And, yeah. and, and and his and his um his mentality is is, is now going to be like, look. I'm going to do everything I can to win the championship. This isn't a team sport anymore. This is about me stamping my authority. Because if this is the last chance yeah. I get to win a championship, I'm not going to squander it coming second to Lewis Hamilton. And that that for me makes the That's situation the, that would, makes the situation for uh, at Mercedes much more difficult. And it would it would really conflict me that if if Mercedes suddenly <laughs> have a car that can win a championship. Lewis is going up against a riled up George George Russell. At the end of that season, when they're on an upward trajectory, he's heading off to a Ferrari. That would be a nightmare. Wait a second, though. As a Lewis Hamilton fan, you should be rooting for him to get his eighth. It's even better if he wins his eighth and then goes to Ferrari. And then oh, yeah. guess what? How, it, however he wins it, I don't that, care. Like, it doesn't like... matter. So I think even I think it would be massively stupid for Mercedes to not if if again we're we're controlling for many factors, right? But if Lewis is clearly head and shoulders above where George is at, 
and they are in the mix and forget even winning like even if it needs more podiums right like he's going to be their best shot shot to get them up in the constructors if maybe they have by chance some luck at that right if, if this was max verstappen and sergio perez i would say i would agree with you but they, <laughs> they, these two are not then they're, they're not that far apart in performance sure lewis outscored george a lot but george was george was out there like trying to prove that he was better than Lewis in every single race, and that cost him a lot of points. Uh, if, if he's if he's got over that and and he's got the confidence this season in twenty twenty four that the future of Mercedes lies with me, then does, there is at least the potential though? that does it does it though? What if they sign? What if they who, sign who? Alonso? I don't know. I mean, we can we can go wild with this stuff. We're going to need yeah, a whole but, other pod just to just so, but, do driver carousel now. But 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 George will then. But I think George in that situation, without knowing that that's the play, will have the confidence that that the team is built is building around him. That's what that's what Mercedes have been saying up until now. That when Lewis Lewis Hamilton retires, the team's going to be building up around George George Russell. And okay, I take your point. There there might be a complete wild card. In that drivers, um, in that seat mm. next seat in in twenty twenty five, but 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 not in twenty twenty four, and that that's that's where actually that the, it it could be fireworks at Mercedes if they build a competitive car. You know who's got to be kicking himself in, in this regard? Orlando. No, Daniel Ricardo. He was going to sign up to be the re- reserve driver for Mercedes last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Had cool. he done that, that he, his pathway to a Mercedes seat is much more easier than to a Red Bull seat. It really is, but not not anymore. Obviously, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't work anymore now. But but you know, I, I think I'm I'm not saying George is the winner or the loser. For me, it's a big TBD. It really depends on who they put in that second seat because it will signal to you where they're headed with this. If Mercedes genuinely feel like they want to develop the car and then sort of look at this long term, right, to say, you know, 26 onwards, maybe 27, 28 is their window, right? Their next real window of competing for championships, right? Then it might be worth putting in a rookie in there, right? Why why go with or maybe bring in an Alex Albon or someone like that or Kimi Antonelli, who was the 17 year old. Go ahead and put him in there right now. Like, might as well get him go, going, right? You could take this a la a Max Verstappen, right? And in, in some ways, I like right? that. I right? love that. So that at in if that if something like you know if if they go that route and let's say they put Kimi Antonelli in there, okay, that's George's team. If they put Albon in there, yeah, it it's starts. Still, it's off, still George's team. It's still Esteban Ocon, who is uh, still, who, is who is his agent? Who is his agent? Who is his agent? No, but. Okay, okay, but then you're saying that if you put Valtteri, listen, if you put Valtteri Bottas in the team, are you telling me that it's, it, it's not it's at all? Cool for Valtteri, Valtteri Bottas is now he's look. I, I've told you this before. Once you start going down that path of you know sort of going on the out and out, that's not everyone is a Checo Paris, not, right? Not everyone. But I think an Ocon would be would be a great. I mean that that's great. I mean Ocon is fast too, man, and we don't get to see a lot of the Alpine know, drivers I, because of how much Alpine stinks. But in reality, there's something to be said about that. What if Checo Perez gets moved over to Mercedes? Who knows? I mean, this is this is just amazing. So for me, the George Russell thing comes down to who they put in that seat. If they put someone in that's younger, who they want to kind of have get to learn the ropes and and you know eventually kind of have them be there, which is which might be the smartest move to be honest. I mean, it doesn't the 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 Hamilton move suggests right that in more likelihood than not that they're not going to be competitive the next couple of years and. They probably know that deep down inside too. They might as well go ahead and get a rookie in there and and let's sort of move him there. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. This this is a this is a problem for them, right? That that, that actually the 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 greatest performance differentiator that, that Mercedes have is is getting off to Ferrari. Um, poor Mercedes, and Alan, you can tell from this that that actually. <laughs> I'm 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 very much like okay. Yeah. Mercedes are old well, news now. Well, I'm, I'm all in on Ferrari. You're you're ready to ditch your your Mercedes March. <laughs> I'll send a few Ferrari things your way, man. Yeah, I'll be I'll be spending money on that myself, well, man. Don't a, worry. It's uh, a lot of. I mean, the, my my my, my biggest loser in in all of this is also me. I did not buy shares of Ferrari, which I should have done a week or two ago. And, and they just shot up like a good, I don't know, last I checked, it was like 50% up. Like that, that's just crazy, man. Wait, 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 I've made some money there. It didn't, it yeah. didn't happen. Uh, um, Amar, what, what happens if they, if Ferrari just do a direct driver swap? 
I, I think that would be great if they if if presumably Mercedes wants signs, right? Which I think would be great. Um, I I know that science doesn't want, and I really feel bad when we should talk about science, right? Like he is he's sort of the big loser in all of this, right? Through no fault of his own. This feels okay. like you know uh, what Checo felt, right? Back when Sebastian Vettel was moving from Ferrari to uh, why well, it was still was it Racing Point still then? I think it was before it turned into to Aston, right? But it, I do kind of feel bad for him. It, it, you know, he has been nothing but great for Ferrari. He's the only one that won a race for them last year. You know, he won a race in in twenty two as well. I mean, and it's, uh, it, it, it just stinks because he was good. But again, when you have a seven time world champion coming in, it's kind of hard not to, you know, not to not to feel that way. I would love to see him in Mercedes, to be honest. That would be my number one preference, particularly if these next two, three years seem like more of a Band-Aid approach. And um, I think that that pairing would be fairly formidable. I think Carlos is is really great at, you know, being able to bring the car to where it needs to be. Not the quickest guy, but certainly he's right there in, in most mm -hmm. races and he's always in there. And that could be a good match. I would hate to see him go to Audi, man. I, I really do. I mean, because Audi is going to be at least three to four years, five years away in, in being any sort of competitive, right? They're going to really have to wait for those massive changes in, in 26 uh, to make an impact. And I don't know, maybe a seat back to Red Bull, but even Daniel Ricciardo is in, in the waiting. So I don't know. Like this is, it's kind of crazy. The McLaren seat is not open. Unless Oscar Piastri has some sort of exit clause, or Lando has, I mean, it's just it's just crazy. But I'd love to I'd love to see Science at Mercedes because it does keep him in the mix. Yeah, I think so too. I think Carlos is always. I always feel bad for Carlos, and um, I mean, just to be clear, I do think that that Lewis Hamilton is an upgrade on Carlos Science at at Ferrari for that seat. There's no question about that. Um. But Carlos is always a uh, is always a sort of nearly man, right? He was he was the guy that was caught in the crossfire between Renault and McLaren. That's right. Uh, Renault, McLaren, and, and Red Bull mm -hmm. uh, when, when that seat swap merry go round happened. Um, and again, just as you say, through absolutely no fault of his own, Carlos has been left on on the sidelines again. Um, and I also agree with you that I think in terms of the the the, the most competitive seat that he could find himself in um mercedes is that is that seat um and i guess if, you, if you're gonna have to give up a ferrari seat that's probably the seat to go to, to go to and i have to say yeah um if if it was a uh, that if i was george russell that's the signing that i'd be worried about because because carlos is like him but better mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. he may not he may not have the absolute ultimate pace um that george does especially especially getting the most out of a, um, a car that isn't performing at its peak. Um, but as a, as, a, as a savvy operator who knows how to get what he wants, I mean, he clearly wasn't able to get what he wanted out of Ferrari. Let's leave that to one side. But in terms of on a race-by-race -race basis, knowing how to get what he wants and the best result that he possibly can, that his ability in the car allows him, I think he does that better than George. I think, um, I think, I think that that would make him a formidable opponent for George mm -hmm. at, at at Mercedes, and that that is the only thing that I think George should be scared of. You just have to look back to Singapore, right, this past year to see how he managed that race. It's such a oh, brilliant so mind, right? So clever to do it from the cockpit, having someone less than a second behind you for lap after lap after lap tires going away like you're it's all kinds of crazy emotions the only race of the year that 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 a non-red bull car won like that is it's amazing so i think in many ways right carlos Sainz fits the bill for what a mercedes driver could be too right i mean they presumably need someone and if if you're going to replace hamilton right just do the opposite too right like if you're going to replace hamilton <laughs> then then you might as well get someone that i mean who else is on the market right now i mean arguably alonso is there too right uh, so that's that's sort of the wild card and, and this is where i feel bad for science right a path to mercedes looks like alonso is lurking in the back there a path back to red bull which would also be a great way to <laughs> leave ferrari and go somewhere right seems like it's kind of muddied up too right there, there's daniel ricardo mm. in the waiting this checo paris could have a decent rear oh, who knows right I mean, yeah, but, but, yeah 
so, I, so from what I understand, Max and Carlos get on quite well yeah. now, but they were they were pretty fractious um, both before they came into Formula One and in their season together. Mm-hmm. Because I think Carlos uh, felt hard done by uh, by the Red Bull team uh, or the Red Bull family when he was in F three and Max was in F three, and even though Carlos was further forward in the in the queue, Max got the call up to 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 get the uh, to get the um, Toro Rosso seat before he did. Um, I think that that always sat badly with him. And then when they were teammates together, there was, you always felt that like if Carlos had been a driver that had appeared like 10 years earlier, mm-hmm. like he, he'd, have, he'd have blown everybody else away. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like every, everyone would have bowed down in front of him. But he's been unfortunate that he's a, that he is, a Jensen Button in an era where there's a Fernando Alonso, a Michael Schumacher, a Kimi Raikkonen, mm-hmm. and they're all there. Mm-hmm. And like, how do I compete when I'm almost there but not quite? Yeah. Um. And he's got his gifts. You know, he's got he's got he's got gifts that he can fall back on that he uses to the best of his ability. But they don't. And certainly this is clearly what Ferrari felt as well, that they don't overcome the pace deficit to their lead driver. Yeah. Well, and again, if you're replacing him with a seven-time world champion, I mean, that brings so many it's different no-brainer, factors. Right? It's yeah. just, I think the wild card in all of this is Alex Albon, right? Because he presumably, he has to be the leader in any of the top open seats. Now, of course, there's no more seat at Ferrari, but in either the Red Bull or Mercedes, right? He has to be the number one candidate. Even even putting Alonso in the mix, I think he has proven himself to have overcome everything that he went through. And I, I think a lot of what might happen next would sort of depend on where he goes. Uh, because if he does end up moving, then you know uh, you can see what that Williams seat might also be attractive to a Carlos Sainz, presumably a better seat than the the so-called Audi. But again, you're putting his... Yeah, I mean, at that point, I mean, this again, we're just feeling bad about science, right? Because he, he gets left out of this merry-go-round through no fault always. of his own. It's, it's, it's just, it just him. makes no sense that he would have to go back. So if if I were his reps, like I would be getting on and getting into Mercedes. And even if it's a couple of years, like why not do that and kind of see where things are at in 26 I mean, and, this is it. and do a straight swap then in that case, if that actually yeah. happened. It doesn't look like that would happen. Otherwise, it probably would have happened by now. But who knows? Yeah. Um, okay, final topic because I think we should probably wrap this up fairly soon. But the um, the timing of the the the, the move in terms of uh, moving in twenty five um, seems uh, poetic again for Lewis uh, when he left McLaren. He left uh, for Mercedes to to drive there for the twenty thirteen season. So he had one season before a massive regulation change. Um, and he's clearly felt that if he's going to go, now's the time to do it. So he gets a year to bed in and make sure that everyone knows what he needs, what he wants. Um, so that uh, when the big regulation change comes in 2026, if Ferrari are anywhere near it, he's the guy, he's their guy. Um, so there's uh, there's certainly some, um, some, uh, some symmetry there, right? But, but the, the, the move that this reminded me of... Uh, actually was Prost to Ferrari mm. in, in 1990, right? So F- Ferrari had spent fairly big bucks getting Nigel Mansell in for 1989, right? And Mansell was uh, was there up against Gerhard Berger and he was kind of like, you know, this is my team, I'm Il Leone and, uh, you know, I've won my first race uh, as soon as I've turned up there. It's, you know, if, if, if they build a car that can win a championship, I am their guy. And then Prost turns up. Right. And that must have been a, you know, but Prost was definitely pushed, right? There was no, there was no, um, uh, there was no doubt about the fact that the main motivator for Prost leaving uh, McLaren was being pushed out of McLaren by the fact that they were clearly, um, that was clearly Senna's team. Um, but, but he's then also dropping himself into a team where the incumbent is devastatingly fast, right? Uh, and, arguably the best overtaker in formula one at that time right if you a time when when race pace and and getting ahead in the races was actually 
the 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 the, the main objective. And, and you could argue that that's that's what's happening now, and, and why drivers like Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton are so uh, so successful. But but when you're when you're talking about you know jumping out of the uh, frying pan and into the fire, um, that that seems like a similar move, and it, it seemed to work, didn't it? Uh, like Prostake didn't didn't win the nineteen ninety championship, but he he was pretty close. Uh, and if we're talking about, do I have some faith in in Lewis's move to Ferrari? It's not just the technical aspect that I talked about as well. There is a historical aspect to this as well that, you know, it's been done in the past that a driver as complete as Alain Prost was able to, to mm -hmm. turn up and be successful at Ferrari, even if it was for one season. And that gives me some hope that, that Lewis can do the same thing. What I don't know is whether that's going to be enough for him to win a championship, which would be what I want, what Lewis wants, and presumably what Ferrari want too. I I um I love the I love the history lesson by you, Chef. Well, first of all, that is that is that is a great thing. And I think, yeah, we're we're hoping for Lewis to to sort of break the recent curse that Ferrari has, right? Uh, bringing champions in, uh, you know, Alonso, uh, Vettel, uh, you know, uh, hopefully Very that, that, yeah, it's just you know, it's it's not so. Hopefully, it 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 does break the. What I'm most excited about, I should say, Shaz, is that you and I will be donning red gear the next time we go to to a race in in 25. So, this is your year to wear out your your Mercedes t-shirts and kind of kind of you know paint them, them red, paint them red. Like we're we're gonna be walking around tired pod in 2025 at okay. several race tracks, you know, going all red. That's that's what we it's do. Gonna be scarlet. It's, it's gonna, gonna be scarlet be, red. That's gonna right. Gonna that's right. Rosso Indeed. Corsa. I can't Indeed. wait. So presumably we're doing this now, but uh, given how quick the news cycle works, uh, we might have we might have more to reflect on, uh, you know, in in a few hours or or a few days. Who knows? Uh, yeah. So either see you next week or see you later today. See you next week or see you later today. Uh, but that on on that note, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, rate us, ask questions. We would love to answer questions you have. Drop a question in there and uh, we'll catch you in the next uh, edition of the Thai Pod.